And you may be seated. Take your Bible, please, and find the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 10. And as this morning, I will go through the three of the four Gospels, beginning with Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 19, and then Matthew chapter 16. So we'll be Matthew and Mark and Luke this evening. <clears throat> Matthew 10, <clears throat> beginning in verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes should be they of his own house. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. He that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. And chapter 16, Matthew 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall he reward every man according to his works. Mark chapter 8, please. Verse 34, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples, also he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this generation and sinful, this adulterous and sinful generation, excuse me, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father and with the holy angels. Luke chapter 9. Beginning in verse 22. And he said to them, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. So between Matthew and Mark, Luke says, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself? or be cast away. 
For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, that's the Bible, God's word and God's commands, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his glory, in his own glory, and in his Father's and, and, the holy, and of the holy angels. Now, chapter 14. Beginning in verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them. If any man come to me. And hate not his father. And mother. And wife. And children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sittest not down first and count the cost, whether you have sufficient to finish it? Thus happily, after he laid the foundation, is not able to finish it. All that beheld it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king? Set his not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desire a condition of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but the salt hath lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And Father, I pray that you will prepare our hearts. And I pray that we've already have prepared our hearts to receive what you have for us. And Lord, I'm reminded of Cornelius. When Peter came to his home and he said, we're all here waiting, we're ready. Oh, that your people would be ready to receive your word and then to hide your word and then to keep your word. I pray now that you will bless the preaching and the teaching that you have for each of us collectively and then very pointedly, specifically, personally. And I'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So here, our Lord, the great teacher, the great master, is going to teach a couple of parables to people who are following him. People always follow Jesus, some for the right reason, some for the wrong reason. Some came for the food, not many came for the fellowship. And now he's going to get their attention and he's going to talk to them about being a real Christian. I mean, really being sold out as a Christian. I mean, really being dedicated as a Christian. There's no way you can read what we've read this evening and this morning and again this evening. No way that you could read that, acquiesce to it, submit to it, unless you're a real Christian, a real child of God. In this context, in Luke 14, we find three phrases uh, twice. We find the words, cannot be my disciple, 
three times. And then the other phase, the phrase we find finished. Finished. You think about a runner running a race. They want to get to the finish line. That's the whole idea. Finish the race. We want to finish our race. We want to finish it well. So Jesus then is going to set this group of people aside and is going to speak to them about a right foundation. As we think about a foundation, I'm thinking of Matthew chapter 7. If you'll turn back there with me, please. Matthew chapter 7. And verse 21, very interesting in every congregation, there are not always those present who know the Lord. They may even be on the church row. They may have been baptized into that congregation. But Jesus said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, oh my goodness, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work inequity. Therefore, in summation, when you find the word therefore, find out why it's therefore. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, remember Paul reminds us, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, James says, be it doers of the word, not hearers only, but doers of the word. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Remember, Jesus is the rock not Peter. When Jesus is talking about establishing the church, he said, upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Jesus, the rock, Peter being the stone. Verse 25. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew. Farmers like the rain, but to be in a terrible rainstorm, a tsunami, a hurricane, a typhoon, that's not a very nice place to be. And sometimes it seems in our lives that these kind of storms come in. The wind blows in, the wind blows out. One thing we know about Fort McMurray and the wind is blowing, when the wind is blowing, the weather is going to change. Either warm weather is coming, cold weather is coming, and you can trust the wind. You can't trust the weather, people, but you can trust the wind. And when the wind begins to blow, things begin to change. So here we have then the wind blowing, the floods came because of the rain, the winds blowing, beating upon that house, and it fell not. It fell not. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, again, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and doeth them, shall be likened unto a foolish man. So everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. 
So here is a wise man builds his house upon a rock. The foolish man builds his house upon the sand. He built his house upon the sand. And same thing. The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his what? His doctrine or his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So a wise man builds his house upon a rock. And then we need to have the right foundation. Look at Matthew chapter 21. The right foundation. The solid foundation. And a true Christian can thank the Lord that we have a solid foundation. A solid rock. No quicksand here, but a solid rock. Matthew 21, verse 42. Jesus said unto them, Did you never read Psalms 118, verses 1, verses 22 and 23? Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The builders rejected. That's the Jews. They rejected Christ. He came to his own, his own received not, but to as many as received him. To them gave he power to become the sons and daughters of God. Even them that believe in his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. That means born from above. So your first birth won't get you to heaven. You must be born again. So he goes on to say, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. That's the Gentile nation. We're living in the time of the Gentiles. And when the last Gentile has been saved, Jesus is coming. You want to know when Jesus is coming? When the last Gentile is saved. Not the Jew, but the Gentile. Because the tribulation is all about the Jew. Give me the Jew ready to go into thy kingdom come. The 1,000 year millennium reign. And whose service shall fall on this stone shall be broken. So to be broken is to be born again. To be transformed, to be changed, to be regenerated. So this stone will either break you or it will grind you to powder. But on whomsoever it shall, it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And so you think about a right foundation and a wrong foundation. And then notice what Peter had to say about this. Peter knew about stones. He, of course, is the stone, Jesus the rock. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Talking about a right foundation. Which man intending to build a tower. Sit it down first and count the cost. Again, it costs something to serve the Lord. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envying and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that they may grow thereby. If so be you have tasted the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a, see it, living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, and precious. Is he precious to you? Is he precious to me? If he is precious to us, then every day of our lives, we should pick up the cross and follow after him. 
pick up the cross. And we labored on that this morning, but pick up that cross. It's your cross. It's my cross. You have a cross to be picked up. Ye also, as lively stones, we who are saved, we could say we're part of the rock. And that rock is Jesus. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Acceptable to God. So I am the priest, the priesthood of the believer. That is, we can go to God through Jesus Christ. The Old Testament, they couldn't go to God. The Old Testament, they couldn't have a conference with God. The Old Testament, they couldn't fellowship with God. They had to go through the high priest on behalf of the people once a year. Seventh month, the tenth day when that offering was made for the sin of the priest and the people. But Jesus has come our high priest. He's our holy priest. He's our advocate. He's our intercessor. And we go to God through him as priest. We pray for our family. We think of the old patriarch Job, and Job prayed for his family. And every day he made offerings for his family because he was concerned that his boys and girls might sin. And so he prayed for them. And what a great responsibility for moms and dads to pray for their children and to pray together. Wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures. Get that? The scriptures, Isaiah 28, 16. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, here's the word again, precious, and he that believeth on him should not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is third time, precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumbled at the word, being disobedient, warranted they were appointed. Now going back to Luke chapter 14, let's notice then the testimony of a tower builder. The testimony of a tower builder. Luke 14, this whole crowd has come behind Jesus and he stopped them in their tracks and said, now hang on. If you're going to follow me, if you're going to be for Christ, then you need to consider some things. You may start, but will you finish? Don't tell me what it takes for you to start something. Tell me what it takes for you to finish what you've started. How important is to finish the race and to be faithful to come to the end of the race and to have him be able to say, well done, well done. And that's when rewards would be passed out. Notice again, verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower sit it not down first, counting the cost? So it's gonna cost you something to serve Christ. It may cost your loved ones to forsake you. When my mother got saved, 1979, September of 1979, interesting, September of 79 is when I surrendered to be a missionary and come to Canada. And at the feet of my mother's bed, she was in the hospital, I led my precious Catholic mother to the Lord and she got saved and it cost her something. Her other Italian family members disowned her. And then when they found out that her boy was a Baptist preacher, that really shocked them. But for one aunt, she actually came to my graduation celebration. Count the cost. Whether you have sufficient to finish it. And the word sufficient is added by the translator 
so it doesn't harm it to say, or he have to finish it, to finish. Start well, finish well. Lest happily, after it laid the foundation, I'm a Christian, and I love the Lord, and I'm being faithful to the Lord, and your family will say, we'll just watch you. We'll see how that works out. When my dear wife and I left our neighborhood, it was an affluent neighborhood, next two doors down were two General Motors engineers, husband and wife. And they found out that I got religion. What they really found out is I got right with the Lord and my dear wife got saved. And they said, Dennis, when you get done with that, you can move back to the neighborhood and hallelujah, I've never moved back. I don't get it why people start and they stop. I don't get it why some Christians have to say, I used to be a Sunday school teacher. I used to have a bus route. I used to be a soul winner. I used to read my Bible. I used to tithe. I used to be a witness. I used to work for the Lord. I used to. Don't want to be a used to. Lest after, lest happily after he laid the foundation. And is not able to finish. All that beheld begin to mock him. When a Christian backslides, they don't realize, but, but you've harmed your relatives. You may get right with God, but they may never get right with God. And case in point is Abraham. Friend of God, father of the faithful. God said, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to give you the land, give you a great name, make a great nation. And then the famine came. And the first thing Abraham did is he waned in his faith and he went to Egypt. When he went to Egypt, he took Lot, his nephew. Now, God said in Genesis 11, leave your family. Abraham was a heathen, an idol worshiper. Leave your family, you leave your father, and come follow me. You see, if we don't resign to follow Jesus, we'll never follow Jesus. If we don't make him first place and make him Lord of our lives, he may be our Savior, but he's not our Lord. And, and you're as helter-skelter. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're not. You're not consistent. You live a mediocre life because I come Sunday morning, I can't Sunday night. I come Sunday morning, I can't be there Sunday night. And don't bother me about Wednesday night. Uh, I'll give a little bit, but I'm not going to tithe. Going on one year, it's 12 months, and 10 months, October the 10th, 2021, members of Emmanuel Baptist Church haven't given a dime. A dime. Not a dime. Not only that, they have not darkened the door. in 22 months. Now they're not here, but I'm simply saying to you and to me, let him that think if he stand take heed lest he fall. What will it take to stop you? What it'll take to stop you is not picking up your cross as we mentioned this morning. If you pick up that cross, that cross will help you to be dead to the world, the flesh, and the devil. But if you lay down the cross and you don't pick it up, you're done for. Yes, you're going to heaven, but you're not going to enjoy the trip. People are saying, I'm so happy Jesus is coming. No, you're not going to be happy, honey. When Jesus comes, you are going to be ashamed, as we read from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Ashamed. He's going to be ashamed of you. You would be ashamed when you see him who died for us on the cross. We sung a song, we sing it many times, but it talks about the blood being spilled. I don't like that song. 
It's a good song, but I don't like the word spilt. Spilt sounds like an accident. We sing a lot of songs. I don't necessarily agree with them, and some of them are not sound doctrine, but we sing them anyway. But to think that his blood was spilt was an accident. He said, no man take my life. I lay it down freely. And he laid it down freely. He was willing to go to the cross, remained on the cross, when the crowd said, come off the cross. Save yourself and save us and we'll follow you. He knew that was a lie. The two thieves on either cross showing humanity both said, if you're the son of God, save us. Save yourself, but save us. But as one watched and he heard love coming out of the lips of the Lord, when he heard him say, Father, forgive them, they know what they do, what they do. When he said, Son, behold thy mother, mother, behold thy son, and gave up his mother to John, the loved disciple, his aunt, by the way. When he said, I thirst, you know, twice Jesus said, I thirst, and never got what he asked for. But he gave up his life for us. But one of those two recognized something different about this fellow. And he said, Lord, remember me when thou come to thy kingdom. And Jesus said, today should thou be with me in paradise. And he was. So when we're thinking about this Bearing our cross and picking up our cross. That's real Christianity. Paying the price. Being willing to sacrifice for Jesus. And by the way, tithing is not a sacrifice. To tithe is pretty simple. You make $100,000 a year, 10000 should have gone to your church. And then tithes and offerings. So it really disturbs me in 36 years of pastoring to see people that don't give. I would never force them to give. And I would never try to embarrass them to give because it's a matter of the heart. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So people who are not giving, people who are not coming, obviously they're not giving. But some people are not coming and they are giving. Figure that out when you're not doing anything. Not coming to church, but they're giving. So again, to be sold out to the Lord, that's a tall order in 2021. I mean, to be sold out, and tonight is the sold out with the exception of a few that are not able to, the sold out. And someone says, and I don't like this terminology, you're preaching to the choir. Well, the choir needs preaching too. But more than preaching to the choir, I need preaching. So, they mocked him. Lot mocked Abraham. Lot was a vagabond. Lot followed Abraham, but when push comes to shove, Lot said, I'll, 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 I'll go, to the, I'll go to, back to Egypt because Sodom and Gomorrah look just like Egypt. And by the way, you need to get as far as away as you can be from Sodom and Gomorrah. You need to be far away from the things of the world, far away as you can be, because it'll suck you in and suck you up. That's exactly what happened to Lot. See, Abraham got right after a fashion, by the way. He didn't get right right away. Because when he came back, he brought a slave girl, an Egyptian slave girl. Hagar was her name. You know the story. Sarai, before God changed her name to Sarah, princess, and Abram to Abraham, Father of the faithful. He had a baby with Hagar. Because as far as they were concerned, God had 
holding out on them. So again, backslidden and a backslider have consequences. Not following the Lord has consequences. And the consequences are those you leave behind. Think about David for a moment. Think about everybody that David influenced when he went with Bathsheba. One night of pleasure ended up with murder, lost his family, murdered a soldier, turned one of his great counselors against him, the grandfather of Bathsheba, Joab, part of the murder, Uriah the Hittite, innocent, Bathsheba, sinned with David. Why? Because he didn't go to war. He didn't pick up his cross. We all know what happened to Lot. Lot lost his family. It's a big deal to sin. If it's, it's a big deal to sin, it may be pleasurable, but it's a big deal because others are affected by it. Boy, how precious for a family to say, we're bringing our kids to Christ. The first missionary land is your land and our children to bring them to Christ to see that they're under the sound of the preaching of God's word. And thank God for those of you who do that, that many do not. Many would rather have their children have a lot of things said about them on a scholastic platform, on an educational platform. And they make sure that their kids get all the education they can get, but no Bible. That doesn't work. Yes, you need education, but you need the Bible more than you need education. Because reading, writing, and arithmetic will help you count, help you read, help you write, but it won't help you get to heaven. So David suffered, Lot suffered. And they didn't finish their course. Verse 30. Saying this man began to build was not able to finish. I can think of preachers that I went to school with. Thinking about a young man that went to Canada, also went to Windsor. I went to school with him. I worked in a shop with him. We worked nights, went to school in the daytime, worked nights. Punding, um, um, not a, I want to say a printing press, it wasn't a printing press, it was a press. Boom, boom, boom. Grinding things, making things. And he went to Windsor and lost his testimony. I think of another young man, we had a contest, he had raised money, you have college years that you're raising money. We had a walking marathon. The one who won the marathon was gonna get a brand new suit. <clears throat> yeah, you never believe it, I won the marathon. Started earlier than everybody else, finished earlier than everybody else. And the spiritual Young man, young preacher man, decided not to give me a new suit, but give the money to the school. <clears throat> He's no longer in the ministry. Didn't last very long. And by the way, anything that we do for the Lord is by His grace. And Paul is very specific. Let him that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he fall. I could fall in any moment. I thank the Lord to have a wife that 
doesn't fight me. Had a buddy, in fact, we, had, we used to start bus routes. He and I would start bus routes in neighborhoods. And when he surrendered to preach, his wife literally jumped on his back. They're both in heaven now. But to build something is so important. To build a legacy. To be able to look back at your family and your children. Now the Bible says, train up a child in the way it should go and when it's old and not depart. That's not a promise, that's a principle. Sometimes they'll do wrong. Sometimes in the best family, children go wrong. And only by God's grace. So let's be mindful of picking up the cross. Peter did. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1. Peter did. Paul did. Many others did. 2 Peter. Remember, Peter wrote two books. 1 Peter, Suffering. Read through the five chapters of 1 Peter, you find suffering. 2 Peter, look, look out for the false teachers, false prophets. Verse 12 of chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1. Peter over and over is reminding. You know what the greatest teaching is? Repetition. So I like the book of Deuteronomy. Repetition. Over and over. Why? Because we're thick-headed. Somehow tough-hearted we should be tender-hearted. 2 Peter 1.12 Wherefore I would not be neglected to put you always in remembrance of these things. Do you know them and be established in this present truth? Yet I think it meet as long as I am this tabernacle. You see, this is only temporary, not eternal. So if it's fading, young people, they have no idea. Of course, there are some young people that are ill, but young people, they have no idea. They can just go and go and go and go. But when you get older, it takes more time to recuperate. You can do something, but the next day you can say, oh my goodness, why did I do that? <clears throat> so, Peter said, you know, you knew them and be established in the present truth. Yet I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle, this temporary body, to stir you up by putting you in, see it, remembrance knowing that shortly I must put off this, my tabernacle. Even as our Lord Jesus had showed me, remember John chapter 21, Peter said, what about this man? Jesus said, don't worry about that man, worry about yourself. And when you're old, you're gonna be led where you don't wanna go. So that's why in Acts chapter 12, when Peter was locked up, James, John's brother James, they killed him, Herod cut off his head. Peter could sleep because he knew he wasn't old yet. He believed the Bible. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. So remember, remember, and remember to be faithful and count the cost. Paul did. Paul said, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I suffer the loss of all things and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. So Paul counted the cost. Peter counted the cost. Will you and I count the cost? Look with me once again to Galatians chapter 6. We looked at it this morning, but just briefly. First verse 11 of chapter 5. Again, how important the cross. Galatians 5.11, And I, brethren, if yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would that they were cut off, which trouble you. Paul said, I wish they'd go to hell. That's exactly what he said. 
Galatians 1, he also said, anybody preach another gospel, let them go to hell. That's pretty strong, strong preaching, isn't it? So don't let the cross be an offense. And then chapter 6 and verse 14, and I'll stop with this. Paul said, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that cross, you've got to pick it up. Remember, Jesus said, take my yoke and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your soul. For my yoke is, bur my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So pick that cross up and put it up in front of our three enemies. Save in the cross of Christ, Jesus, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Shall we stand together? The high price, the high cost of Christianity. Have you ever thought about this? Let me give you a thought. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we found that what should a prophet man is to gain the whole world and lose his own soul. So who's the richest man in the world? It doesn't matter who it is or who it isn't. He can't pay for your salvation. But he who was rich, Paul said, became poor for us. When was he rich? He was rich when he was living in heaven. But he left it and came down here. And then he paid an unimaginable unbelievable price for your soul and mine. There was his blood dropping, dropping down on that cross. But it pleased the Lord to bruise him when he should make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see the travail of his soul and should be satisfied. Every time a lost person comes to Christ, turns from self-righteousness and embraces the cross and gets under the cross. Remember Pilgrim's Progress? Remember Christian? As he came with his heavy burden at the bottom of the cross, it fell off and rolled down the hill. And Jesus is still the sin bearer for all who are lost. He'll bear your sin with his shed blood. And then to a saint, a child of God, to keep you keeping on. If we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And if we're not in fellowship, the B-L-O-O-D, blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So when you get out of fellowship and you lay that cross down, just confess it and pick it back up. I said this morning, and I'll conclude tonight, tomorrow morning, when you wake up in the morning, get into the Word, look at that mirror, beholding in the glass the glory of the Lord are changed from the image to image, glory to glory, as in the face of Christ. So as you look at the Bible, He's going to speak to your heart. And then yield to the Holy Spirit. Whatever time you get up, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, every three hours, take stock. Something I've done wrong? That somewhere along the line did I lose the cross, my cross? Pick it back up, confess that sin, and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you and carry on. And it'll change your life as you carry that cross. Put on the armor of God. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw this morning, Romans 13, 14. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no for provisions for the f flesh to fulfill in the lust there. People make for provisions for the flesh. They make provisions about sinning. So remember, we're building for Christ. Let's be wise builders. Father, I almost hate to quit 36 years 36 years behind this pulpit. Delivering the message behind this wooden pulpit. 
made in the example of D.L. Moody's pulpit that my landlord made for me 36 years ago and came to our first anniversary service. My first landlord. The second landlord came to our new building and helped us with this building, gave us some good advice, and he built this pulpit for me, built the Lord's Supper table for me, but never got saved, as far as I know. But Lord, I'm still preaching it by your grace and by your mercy and according to your will. Help me to finish good. Help us all to finish well. Help us to remember daily. We've got to pick it up. Luke said daily. Pick it up daily. Not just on Sunday, but every day, pick it up. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Before I close, preacher, pray for me tonight in my walk with the Lord. Pray for me tonight. Remember me in closing prayer with my walk with the Lord. Pray for me tonight. Amen. My hand's up with yours already. And if someone is here or someone's listening and you've never received Christ as your Savior, 10, 10, 21 means October the 10th, 2021. Be a good night to get saved. If you're not saved, come to Christ. Receive him as your Savior, trusting in his shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection. That's the good news of the gospel. And Father, we thank you for that good news. We thank you for that good word, your word. We thank you for the blood, that precious blood. Oh God, may your son be so precious to us to not be tempted is to be in contempt. We are tempted. But Lord, help us not to give in to our temptation, the world, the flesh, and the devil. But to bear our cross and be followers of you. Bless every decision made tonight in Jesus' name.